5.1, 2.58. That's calm. He got an interview as well. Essentially, there's a lot of applicants you can see here. Really on like applicant number 640. Now for section two results, I think the majority of people found that section not hard, but just time pressure differently. Okay. <laughs> Leave a thumb. It's cringy star. And hopefully today UCL results and Imperial results will sort of be analyzed. And this is from the administrators or the administration team or admissions, te admissions team, that's the one. This is a 2016. I couldn't really find something for 2019, so please forgive me. So yeah, these are some of the results that essentially some of the students have got and they have been accepted. Now, some of them are really high, some of them are really low. Um, let's look for an okay one. 4.3, 5.3, 3.8. That's okay, that's actually pretty, not that bad, honestly, I'm not going to lie. 5.26, yeah, that's really high. It is quite difficult. Some of these sections are like, it's not like a 900 in the UK cap. It's not too hard to get like a 7 in a section, but it's honestly, it's timing. That's one thing that I'd really advise for this exam, sort of like the UK cap. 4.5, 5.1, 2.58. That's calm, he got an interview as well, so can't be complaining. But essentially, there's a lot of applicants you can see here. Really on like applicant number 642 or 64, sorry. Um, we're still going through it. I'm just trying to look for a really low result. Four. 4.3, 2.5a, and he got interviewed. Now this could mean that his GCSEs were okay and the predicted grades were amazing, so I'm talking about like 40 stars, and potentially they'd give him some preference. Now if you get a decent score in the BMAT, one thing that I'd really encourage is do not do four subjects. Honestly, I've done that myself. I know what it means to have so much work that you need to do that's so unnecessary. Trust me on this one, just drop it. Drop either if you have like maths or something that you're weak on basically. And yeah, so basically you can see the maddest of applicants. So 450 goes all the way down and you can I'll highlight this for you so just in case you can't see it. 3, 4.7, 3.8 and he's still got an interview. Mad. Um, 3.8, where was that? I just saw it and I just flew. Okay, here it was, 5.338, so you can sort of compensate in one section for another. If you get threes on both, you're probably th finished. Um, applicants, it doesn't really say if these guys got in, they probably got in, there's a lot to scroll down, I'm not going to lie to you, bro. There's a lot of applicants. Okay, maybe for these people, they potentially didn't get in, it could be their pretty good grades, but just look at the sort of scores you're aiming for. Here, can you filter it down? No, you can't. Aim for these sort of scores. You need to just, if you get five on both section and two A stars prediction, pretty sure you're getting it. Pretty sure you're getting it. To the interview that is. And obviously in the interview, there'll be another section, another part of the course for that. Now, I believe that was like 2016, 2017. These are essentially some of the questions that are asked. I'll show you what the questions were. Question three was the number of GCSEs each applicant got. We probably don't want to know that. If you got a standard eight, it should be fine. Predicted A level grades of each applicant. Okay, so now we're basically moving on to like 2018, I believe, or 17's UCL admission cycle. Now the one I showed you prior was 2016. Just to show you, yeah, when yeah, they're roughly the same. Now this person who basically asked the admissions tutor in UCL to send him some of the results. And essentially this question, question three or question six, sorry, the predicted A-level grades of the students of each applicant. So you can see here, the guy had four A grades. You you will not see, oh, you actually see a B. Okay, that's pretty mad. I never thought you would. They probably just get rejected or unless they have like some extenuating circumstance. Um, but the majority are just A stars, A stars and A's. I think the, the most, most of them are A stars. So it's really, really important that you smash to get your predicted yeah, so as you can see, that's over probably like a thousand A stars um, in the cycle. So it's really, really important that like, you just stand out and you need to just stand out. No one's going to know you. So you're basically a test statistic and, you know, just make sure that you, you know, do what you need to do. Okay, so from here, you can also see that the question asked, contextualize GCC score of each applicant. We do not score GCSEs, so we would not have a contextualized score. Now this shows that the UCL admissions process doesn't really care about your GCSEs for as long as you pass your English and your maths. They don't really care. They care about your predicted grades, they care about your BMAT score. Those are the main two. So question 10 was um, that was asked by the student is to indicate whether each applicant had extenuating circumstances or not. Now the response by UCL is UCL does not take any extenuating circumstances into account. This should be done by exam boards 
at the time the qualification is sat. Now this is the case, I've explained it in my um, UCAT case, but what you need to do is you need to take the testing that makes you, for example, dyslexic officially or have like ADHD or autism or something like that. I'm not saying just make it, fake it. I'm not saying that. What I'm telling you is you need to do it prior to sitting the exam because once you take it, you're judged just the same. And if you're found out to have dyslexia, it ain't gonna change your results. So what you need to do prior to taking the exam, and what you need to do is apply for the BMAT with extra time, and they will sort of like look at the you know the score once it's processed. Just summarizing it to you that UCL is one that takes account of your BMAT primarily as well as your predicted grades. Now your personal statement also needs to be at a good level because within the interview room, the woman's reading your, no, your personal statement. I'm making it out like I'm reading a Quran. Basically what I'm telling you is that it's really, really important, trust me on this one, that you perfect your personal statement. You do not lie. If they catch you lying, you're finished. Hands down, straight away you're finished. And so hopefully now let's move on to the imperial one and see what sort of scores are necessary and that sort of stuff. Okay, so as you can see, this is the Imperial College London A100 undergraduate waffle. So let's start. Year of entry, we can see that the BMAT cutoff scores. So with this, with Imperial, they have cutoff scores. So you can't go crazy and get a nine in one section, then get a three on another. Basically, that's gonna happen to you. So yeah, you can't extremely warp the scores just like you can in UCL as they might take an average but with this it's important that you get just above the average score get the minimum in a section or above obviously primarily you'd want to get above but sometimes it doesn't work out so the cutoffs i mentioned here 2018 4.2 4.1 um when i took the ucat this was 2020 make 2019 sorry i got on the first section i didn't do so well on the bmat so in the first section I got 5.1, the second section I got 3.9, the last section I got 2.5 and I still got an interview at both. I was surprised, um, but somehow I did. Um, 2.5A, that's what I got. So I the section 2 cut off, I was above it so it must have dropped massively. I'll show you the tables later so you can see the BMAP results and the massive warpage. So essentially, so if we look at the BMAP band scores, so that's basically how they judge you. Before what they used to do is like a listing system. What they used to do prior is like a first come first serve basis. That the best applicants get invited to the interview first if they flop then the second best third best fourth best when it comes up to like 400 spaces so this banding system is essentially just trying to categorize who they invite to the interview first you can see if you want to get into band one guaranteed interview basically what you need is 5.5 5.6 and above and you get invited hopefully banding system 4.4 4.5 2.5 Banding 4, I still want an interview, I'm actually quite surprised. Band 4, maybe it just dropped massively and I got a 5.1 in one section. So, you know, it balances off, it does okay. Um, applicants, BMAT score, and essentially this is just the mean applicants. So if we check all unsuccessful applicants, let's not let's think about that section. Not invite, unsuccessful, not invited to interview, that's probably the best one to check. 2018, 4.1, 4.2, 3.1, and they weren't invited, so that's mad. Um, offers made, the average offer made, um, 5.1, 5.3, 3.4, and that's a 3.4A. So I think 100% they must include the BMAT score within the sort of grading process after the interview, so they must combine it, because they can't jump that far. I haven't seen something like that happen. Um, there's another breakdown as well, so essentially they tried to make sure that all people from an academy, comprehensive school, further education do get in. So one thing that Imperial does and I really like is that they look at what school you've applied to. So for example, if you went to a grammar school, your requirement would sort of be higher. Because I know a person who simply didn't get accepted primarily because he didn't score that high, but he scored a good score. I think it was like 4.6 average. And he didn't get invited primarily because I think he went to a grammar or private school, one of them too. So, and he used to go to my school. I'm not saying I'm a private. This is the sixth one that we used to go to. So they look at your secondary school as well. Now guys, this is basically just to show you why the results change, why the cutoffs change. Um, we saw 2018 was like 4.1, 4.2 and 2.58. So here is 2019's results and here's 2018. So we can see a general like, because it's become a skew to this direction for you and a skew to the right of the diagram. It's meant that section one results have gone better. 
Now for section two results, I think the majority of people found that section not hard, but just time pressured differently. Honestly, I left out like six questions. I don't know what was happening. Time went so fast, it was ridiculous, but, and the results basically show it. So we can see here an average of like four, I would say like 4.1, 4.2, hence the cutoff. Here, you can see a massive negative skew. So this way, and I think, so basically it's the left of the screen, um, and I'm probably to the right for me, um, by looking at me in a small box. And honestly, it's just mad. Like, look at the diagram, you can see the amount of people who got 3.5 this year around, that's like 17%. So it was just craziness, honestly, people find it really, really hard, and I was one of them. But essentially the cutoff was less than that for Imperial, so it was a good plus. I can't say anything, I was just really, really lucky to get in, and um, thanks God to that. Guys, I hope that information was useful, and usually people don't mention it, so I thought might as well give it a shot before you find another guy trying to copy the same video. So basically, if you like that, please leave it a thumbs up and um, yeah, see what the YouTube algorithm can do. So guys, in the next video, hopefully you'll be going through Oxford and Cambridge because that's what the, you know, the clickbait titles are. So guys, catch you later.